about Raspberry Pi, but I'd like to open it a bit and talk about hardware a little more generally. When I were a lad growing up in post-war Britain, can you be a louder? I'll well, move closer. <laughs> Plenty uh, of chairs here. <laughs> people, kids messed with hardware an awful lot. And there was a lot of it around, war surplus, gyroscopes and electronics and so on. And, and uh, maybe Ron will remember this. We built crystal sets and valve radios and things. And then the computer world came upon us and a lot of that kind of stopped. And sort of, I found that recruiting people, I'm quite surprised that the younger people who write software, their only contact with reality has been a mouse and a keyboard. And they don't do hardware things. And certainly in the area I live, which is the West Midlands, um, there's been a, a few new things lately. There's been the hacking sessions and FizzPop. We hosted the first FizzPop session, and the people who came to that were amazed at what you could do with a board and a soldering iron and a few components. So there's been a bit of a resurgence there. And um, <coughs> I'm, I'm down to speak about the Raspberry Pi. I mean, the only reason for that is I happen to have brought one. I know very little about it. I hope you've been interested in being able to play with it. It's an attempt by the Raspberry Pi Foundation to produce something that kids can afford to buy and play with. And Alan, for instance, has talked about uh, teaching kids to code in schools and it would be a natural thing for that. It's, it's headed up by a guy called Eben Upton who happens to work for Broadcom. Is Ben here? Yeah. Right. You, you reckon Broadcom have got quite an input to this behind the scenes? I know they've been calling like a resource and trash designing it. Yeah. I mean, the official line is they're not involved, isn't it? I think. Possibly, but I think they've yeah. released people to go, just go and give them a hand. Yeah. And there are other potential hardware platforms that could help teach kids, like the Arduino, which has produced quite a movement already. And uh, I'm active in the Python world, and someone's put Python on a chip, called it PyMite. It's, it's a bit too simple, I think, but I've got a friend who's working with that and an Arduino-like board, which he's bringing out. There's lots of things going on. And I think it. Well, well, thank you. Yeah. David, yeah. what 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 you um, was saying about replicating the BBC Micro with uh, a simple kit that kids can have and open it up and there's the board and there's a little manual and some exercises and they can connect it up to the TV and plug in a keyboard and it all works. And then they can do things with it, switch on lights and operate motors and you get Bob's robots work. That would be really, really cool. So, yeah. It would be nice to just turn this into discussion yeah. in a moment. Um, I've, I've first heard about the Pi probably about six months ago, and I've just, I, all I've done is I've just read their blog and I've heard people talking to it and I've listened. So I've got a, a basic understanding of maybe the, how it could be applied. One of the things that really appeals to me, just from a historical perspective, is do you know what the, the processor on it? It's an ARM processor. Yeah. And I, I mentioned earlier about the BBC project back in the 80s, and a lot of the work from that went into our. Do you, do you all know the, the story and the links? You know, Acorn Research Machines. Yeah, okay, that sort of thing. So, but um, oh, was advanced research machines. Advanced research machines. <laughs> this, this risk, lots, yeah. Yeah. risk machines. Yeah. Risk machines. Yeah. Right. Cool. Now, um, Imagine now, if, if, if I swip, swap roles, and I'm not a fan of the Raspberry Pi, so if I tried to be Neville's advocate, and I said, you know, throw some questions out to you, because, um, what, let's just say, what if the Raspberry Pi project fails? Okay, so, if, if there was this concept that, right, we put this into schools, we give it to everybody, and it fails, what, what do you think the things are that would likely to cause the whole project to fail? So, I, 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 well, I um, I think it's a, a really noble effort. I think it's fantastic. I know you're not from Raspberry Pi, but just 
Yeah. Um, I'm not going to take a devil's advocate view. I'm going to take a more practical view. Um, I do fear it's going to fail because I've seen stuff like this before, like even like Embed and Arduino and stuff like that. It's all kind of like certain groups adopt it, but there's never a mass appeal. And I, and I don't think Raspberry Pi has that that massive appeal. So the question is, is like, how is it going to get that mass appeal? Because it needs, if it's going to really, I mean, even like the, the one laptop child, you know, it took a certain route, and even that kind of, I don't want to say failed, but kind of <coughs> fell into certain, um, you know, it didn't really go like as it, as they suspected it would, it wanted to go. That's a real problem, and I think this is also, I didn't even know if this would even get anywhere near the lab, one laptop per child um, kind of area. So, I, I really wanted to, but I didn't think it will. I want to know what kind of things do we need to change. Well, I have thought about what we need to change, but I'm interested in what everyone else thinks we need to change. We were talking this, this morning, uh, your talk. The reason the BBC might not work is because it was part of a package. Yeah. There was a programme, there was teaching materials, etc. I think the BBC One might not work if that was Yeah, and they had, what they had with a big, big organisation, they would put promoting it. Just on that, on its own, mm -hmm. it's cheap, yeah. but it needs a support yeah. environment with it. Yeah. It needs to yeah. be reliable, it needs to be robust. Um, teaching teachers won't have that, no. so they need, need some yeah. support network. Well, that's that's even government. Yeah. Yeah. It's only government. It doesn't have to be reliable, it doesn't have to be robust, it doesn't have to have a lot of materials. It doesn't get any of that. What it needs is a government support large distribution. Distribution of money. You have to get it into the places. Your materials will come from the people using it. That's what happened with the BBC yeah. Micro. They never expected what they got from that. BBC A was nowhere near as widespread as BBC B, but it was ubiquitous. It was in every school because it was provided to every school by the government. There, there were money provided for the schools to buy the, the equipment. There was a big broadcasting corporation behind it. Yeah. So it was able to have that distribution network. And oh. that's what you need. You actually need to actually pull, you're not just needing to pull hackers. We're all already behind you. We already think it's cool. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're speaking to the wrong audience. You need to pull politics. You need yeah. to pull your local MPs. You need to pull <coughs> local councils. You need to get some political support behind your idea to try to get some money or to get distribution. Just One or the other will help. You can get distribution or money from the government. To reassert, neither John nor myself have any connection with the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, we're just simply two people who think this, it's got a lot of potential, and it might be, I'm recording this, it might be possible I can pass that back to them, and somebody, if they have time, might want to watch this video afterwards. But it's, what are the potential pitfalls? I mean, one of the ones I would say is, I've heard that lots of developers have had access to the board and are trying things out. I wonder how many children so far have been exposed to it, to actually try it themselves. Mm. Because if they're the target audience, surely children should be the ones who are you know, seed it out there, get it out there and let children try it. I was talking to somebody this morning and I mentioned um, I'm a big fan of open office. I mean, maybe I need to move to Libre office and look at that now, but we, we give it out to children for free with everybody that comes into our school. There you go, there you go. And often they'll come back and they'll say, it didn't work. Uh, what, what, what do you mean it didn't work? Well, we installed it, but you know, I kept thinking that PowerPoint was going to come up or Word was going to come up and, and I tried to crop an image and it it was in the wrong place. And because it doesn't look like what they're used to, they, 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 they see open office as a failure or, or is, it's not worthy. Now, the Raspberry Pi doesn't look like any computer children have experienced so far. If they're expecting that you can run Xbox games and it's going to be a PS3 replacement, they can run 3D, it, it can run some of those things. But I think what will happen is children might just say, oh, it, oh, the Raspberry Pi is a little rubbish. It doesn't do what we want it to do. It so needs, it needs, a, you know, besides the kind of actual the mass adoption, it really needs a killer thing that only it can do. Mm -hmm. And right now, it's kind of like trying to copy what all these other things can do. It needs something. So, for example, the, um, the one that took a child had the ability to do the mesh. Uh, wireless networking, which was interesting, didn't really push it that much, but that was something that 
no one else was doing, you know, what's the Raspberry Pi got that's like the only this thing could do? Yeah. Did, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, there's all this talk about what the device itself can do, but um, I don't know whether I've just got a fan view of young people, but I can imagine them just thinking, oh, let's put super glue on it or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that at, at, at the time of the BBC Micro, computers were new in the home. There were very few home computers. I'm speaking to somebody who was one of the first hundred or so in the country who actually built a home PC. And the BBC was very innovative. In the, it, it was a, a good mass market first computer. They're two a penny nowadays. Mm. You're not going to get the same buzz out of that. Mm. Yes, to us. Yeah. To hackers, yeah, great, fantastic, but mass market, you're not going to get it. So there's, there's two strong themes now coming out. One is, how do we make it appealing to children? Because they are the target audience. Because the BBC was new, fantastic yeah, yeah, computer, yeah. that's the modern buzzword of the 70s. And then it's the other one is, um, some people are saying it needs to come with a full package, and it needs to have something that's unique, that makes sets it out from the others. A conversation we're having in the break before this was with, with, with one of the delegates um, we need all those other resources that come with the pie if if they do they need to work outside of the pie as well because if it's found out later on 18 months down the road it's got some massive hardware issue that nobody had recognized does that mean like um, on the one lap per child there was sugar was an example something that was unique to that platform but that you can transfer it across Mm. Does that make sense of what I'm saying? Or pick up on that? Which thread? says that the project should be a software project so it can be moved out elsewhere rather than hardware. So, so it needs to be a, a, something that you can put on any hardware yeah. in, in theory. Even if it's just a, a CD that boots a VM mm -hmm. under Windows, Linux, Apple, whatever. Or even just an image. Because the, the Pi has a, an SD memory slot on it. Mm. So. It's almost like going back to the old BBCB, you had an EEPROM slot, uh, and you could, you could stick in a database, you could stick in um, a, a turtle program in module, you could plug that in. I wonder what you want to put sugar on it, actually. Yeah, what, would, what does sugar look like? Well, the, you can yourself, it's, it's all open source hardware, <coughs> open source software, you can contact the Raspberry Pi Foundation, uh, identify yourself as a developer and say, can you please send me one of the boards, and, you know, but we need... We need people like you to take this thing on board, and or they need people like you to, to make this work. Oh, and the final product will be cased or packaged in any way. Because again, giving children or parents giving children a circuit board, yeah. I just want to come up with. Yeah. Uh, you know, in that itself will put people off. And the older children who may go for circuit boards, a smartphone in the pockets, yeah. where would the future? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's an issue. That there. might be one of the things that sets it out as being unique. There aren't many products nowadays that you get that's complete that comes without a case. And this is the pie is a lot about what what goes on under the hood. If you then sell it in a case, which is probably going to treble or, or quadruple the cost of the injection mold and all that, um, you then you put it in a box again, which is kind of what happened in the 90s. Computers were then enveloped in a box. You never got to see what was inside. So there is. If it doesn't yeah. have some sort of appeal to children. Yeah. It has to have something that's going to arrest their attention. It's going to be a transparent box then, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it can be, yeah. or it can be a removable box. One of the things I wondered about was... Or design your own case. Yeah, competition for you design and make your own cases. I mean, so almost as soon as the iPad was released, it was this stand, a docking station, a keyboard, the sleeves. Look at the, the old industry that the iPad itself has generated. Mm -hmm. And I know they're mobile devices. Maybe there's a... That's, you know, that's, that's one angle. What, what about kits? So, like, the, the Raspberry Pi comes in, like, um, a, as part of a, a kit where you can make a device. I mean, maybe, I don't know, a, a smartphone to get ambitious, but you can yeah. make something, like a robot or yeah. so on, and there's instructions to follow and, and things like that. So it's not just, like, it's a circuit board, yeah. find out what yeah. to do with it. You've actually got some yeah. sort of hold your hand type. But it's... It's a, it's a PC, yeah. it, 
it, it, it's not like an Arduino, it's not a dev board. Oh, I, would, I would think that would be a very bad idea, yeah. labeling a PC in any way, yeah. because people are quite PC with Windows. Yeah. And they're going to see that, it's not Windows, yeah. and as you say, they're going to be yeah. put off. It would be worthwhile say. talking to Lego, because Lego <laughs> has some successful experience of, of actually marketing a, a computer card that's actually capable of being used as as functional yeah. in a child child <coughs> environment. So talking talking to them about packaging, marketing and what have you. But and basic capability to get you started is So is Lego have they've already got the you know the mindstorms, they've got the NF, the uh, the data the data stuff for the for schools, have it? It would be competing with Lego. So I, I can't see 